Trump has DACA protection. Wildfires ravage the western states, and a nurse in Utah is detained for not cooperating with police. These stories and more tonight on World News. Good afternoon, and welcome to World News Columbus. I'm Jessica Richardson. And I'm Clarence Wallace. Thank you for joining us today. On Tuesday, <clears throat> President Donald Trump moved to end the delayed action for childhood arrivals for DACA Act, calling the program an amnesty first approach. He then urged Congress to pass comprehensive Im immigration reform before the program is phased out beginning in six months. The move drew fire from some quarters, calling the decision a political move and cruel. Trump's hand may have been forced, however, by attorney generals in as many as 15 states who were threatening legal action to end the program. Despite the president's desire for Congress to pass lasting immigration legislation, there seems to be little chance of this happening. With Senate Minority Leader Charles Schumer calling on House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to bring the DREAM Act to a vote, he then added that if no vote was called by the end of September, that we are prepared to attach it to other items until it passes. We'll just have to see how that plays out. I'm all for it. And in Salt Lake City, nurse Alex Wubbles was arrested by Salt Lake City Department Detective Jeff Payne after declining to draw a blood sample from an unconscious patient. The patient Wubbles was protecting was 43-year-old William Gray, a truck driver and reserve police officer from Rigby, Idaho. Gray was driving his truck near Logan, Utah when a suspect fleeing police crossed into oncoming traffic and crashed into head-on until his tractor trailer. The truck caught fire. It was a violent confrontation. Alex Wubbles says Detective Jeff Payne demanded a blood sample procedure and fatal crashes. Wubble refused, stating that Payne would either need patient consent or a warrant per hospital policy. After Wubbles repeated the policy and had a supervisor speak to detectives, Payne seized hold of the nurse, some first cuffing her and then removing her to a police vehicle. Detective Payne and other employees have been placed on administrative leave from the department pending the results of the investigation. Hmm. We'll see. Good story. Well, could COVID medicine turn you into a killer? Matthew Phelps of Raleigh, North Carolina insists it can. On Friday, September 1st, Phelps said he took coricidin cough medicine to fight a cold and help him sleep. When police arrived, they found Lauren Phelps on the floor, covered in blood. She was then transported to a local hospital where she died from her wounds. Phelps has been arrested and charged with murder. He has been denied bail and is being represented by rally attorney Joseph Cheshire. Bayer, the maker of Coercidin, has expressed their sympathies, but insists that their medicine has nothing to do with the murder. Anything for an excuse. And in, in Minnesota, missing teen comes back home. Jasmine Block, 15, was abducted from her home on August 8th by a family friend, claiming to have endured sexual and physical abuse. She was held captive and transported several, several times while missing. Finding herself alone, one day she escaped, swimming across the lake before a farmer recognized her from news reports and contacted local police. The suspects have been taken and into custody and each are being held on charges of kidnapping, assault, and false imprisonment. Jasmine is planning on, in, on returning to classes this week. And in other news, in Texas, a shoplifting case turns into a high-speed chase. Tasha Sponsler was arrested for shoplifting and placed in a police vehicle while deputies searched her bag outside the car. Inside the car, however, Sponsler worked herself out of her handcuffs and into the front seat. Once there, she drove off, leading the police on a 100 mile per hour speed, high speed chase. She eventually lost control of the vehicle. There she was arrested and charged with five felony counts. Bell is set at $18,000. Hmm, wow. <laughs> Wasn't worth it. No. <laughs> And wildfires have continued to burn across the western states with thousands evacuated over 1.5 million acres already affected. 
it appears that there is finally some relief in sight with a large wet low pressure system forming over southwestern part of Canada and northwestern states of Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Northern California should finally see some abatement in the hot, dry conditions that are aiding these fires. Southern California is less fortunate as they will remain mostly dry. Firefighters there continue to battle a number of blazes, including a brush fire being called Los Angeles' largest ever that is currently burning in the mountains of north of downtown. And in the wake of the flooding from Hurricane Harvey, the city of Houston is set to get hit with more rain. Close to three feet of rain has already fallen, and with more to come, it is the most extensive rainfall the region has ever witnessed. On Sunday evening, torrential rains were forming southwest of Houston and were on track to strike the city overnight. The National Weather Service expects rainfall to exceed three inches per hour prompting them to reissue the flash flood emergency, the strongest flood warning it can issue in an effect through 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. No, they just can't get a break. And from one hurricane in Texas to another in Florida, Hurricane Irma made landfall in the Florida Keys Sunday as a Category 4 storm before moving up the coast to Tampa Bay, where it has weakened to a Category 1. With the eye 60 miles north of Tampa and continuing to move northwest up the Florida Peninsula, Irma continues to weaken, but with the devastation she left behind, you would have never have known it. Irma has left a trail of destruction through the Caribbean, leaving the tiny island of Barbuda practically uninhabitable, to leaving more than a million people in Puerto Rico without electricity since last Wednesday and for the foreseeable future. And with more on weather, let's go to Eric Morris with our five-day AccuWeather forecast. Thank you, Carice. It's said to be a very pleasant week here in Columbus. Tuesday is um, 78, 50, low 52, 15% chance of rain. Wednesday, a high of 89, a low of 58, a zero chance of rain. Thursday, a high of 92, a low of 60, less than 5% chance of rain. Friday, we have a high of 89, a low of 59, 10% chance of rain. And then Saturday, we have 57 um, low and 20% chance of rain. This is your five-day news. Uh, weather newscast Columbus forecast back to you guys thanks on August 30th two men entered Monaghan's pub with the intention of committing armed robbery inside they found a party of in full swing for a retiring police sergeant at approximately 5 30 p.m. Two masked men approached the carry-out counter and demanded money from the register and then fled the scene. Some of the officers from the party gave chase and arrested Joseph McInnes III and Tyree McCoy nearby. The men were charged with armed robbery, theft, and related offenses. The pub's owner, Jack Milani, says he surprised anyone would rob Monahans as officers are always in here. And because of the bar's location across the street from the local precinct. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty stupid. Man. Crime doesn't pay. And Kim Jong-un threatens the U.S. after the break. 